This stream and video is proudly brought to you by WhatIsZS.com ZS WhatIsZS.com proudly sponsors the Legalised Cannabis Party. So, ongoing message for the Legalised Cannabis Party. So, yeah, sit with me, enjoy. Okay, friends, subscribers, and all you YouTubers out there, how you going? Look, uh, at the moment, uh, we are currently looking for volunteers for this Saturday, the 18th of March, to man four centres in the Newcastle area. Um, we need volunteers to volunteer to vote, to man all the early voting centres all over the New South Wales area. So no matter where you are, folks, if you can help, please do. Now, someone said to me today, a lot of people are afraid to come out and volunteer for the booth because it's the cannabis party. Yeah, look, if you are a cannabis smoker, a medical cannabis user, don't worry about it. Look, if you don't want to go near an area near yourself, there are plenty of booths. Just in Newcastle, we've got Adamstown, Mayfield, Merriweather, Newcastle. So we have four booths. If you're not in this area, come to this area. Or if you're, say, at Toronto and you want to volunteer, but you don't want to be volunteering in your area, come to another area and volunteer. Find out who is actually looking after it. I'm now currently looking after the early voting centres for Newcastle. Those voting centres are, just bear with me a moment and I shall get them up. So, um, I just have to hit a switch, I'm sorry. And, um, yeah, those voting centres, uh, virtually, yes, as I said, we've got an early voting centre for the uh, Adamstown Community Hall, Mayfield Presbyterian Church, Merriweather Scout Hall, Newcastle Early Voting Centre, which is 150 King Street, Newcastle. Right, I'm actually going to go and scope these ones out to make sure that we are actually covered in these areas. But we have many, many other booths around the area that have to be manned. And this is what a lot of people don't realise, that it was actually the, um, the fact that we manned the booths the last election, that I believe that we actually did so well in the last election. It's the people that are actually going to do it, make a difference. I volunteered at the Carrington Public School voting booth last election, the federal election. Now, I had just got out of hospital. I had just suffered a heart attack. They pretty much told me I was on the verge of death. So I said, look, I'm going to go and do what I normally do. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die doing something. And uh, I did. I really actually volunteered the day after I had a heart attack. And uh, I'd do it again. I'd been in and out of hospital for years and sort of, but it doesn't matter your health. If you, if you can't walk, yeah, take a chair. That's, we had chairs, we had, uh, one girl had a um, wheelchair. But yes, most of our booths were all medical patients that were there volunteering. So whether you're med a medically legal or you're not legal yet, this is why we're trying to man the booze, people. We're trying to man the booze to get it legal for you. So you don't go to jail for having a smoke. So you don't go to jail. And so that we can grow our own, so that we don't have to pay $600 right, to get my meds. Right? That is a cut that most probably lasts me four days. And it is a scripted one. There, there's the script on the back. Uh, that is scripted medication. It costs a damn fortune to go through a month and a half. It cost me over two thousand dollars, folks. So this is why we need both medical, legal, and the ones that want recreational. Because if you want it legal in New South Wales, guys, this is the only time. This is the election what that matters. This is the election that's going to get us in and have seats. If we don't help to get those seats taken, we are going to be sitting there going, oh, I won't be because I'm legal. See, I've got my script. I have THC, there it is there, medical, legal, 
medical legal, and I can take that medicine at any time without fear. I just can't drive my car, so I don't drive my car. But the thing is, right, you can't just keep on sitting there and saying, oh, I wish they'd legalise it. Wake up, people. Wake up. Get off your backside. I'm 61, for crying out loud, and I'm still fighting for this. Right, But the, the only way that is going to change is you, the individual, gets up off your backside and does something. One person can make a difference. Can you imagine what, if we had four or five people at every booth just handing out tickets, and, well, they're not tickets, they had it, like little cards that we give out. If we had uh, enough people at every booth making sure that they get in the hands of people, making sure the posters are up on these centres. Um, we have to actually get out there and do it ourselves. We can't rely on just one small group of people anymore. It's up to you. You are the one that is going to make this legal. Not everybody else, not just me, not just Michael, not anybody else. It's got to be you. You are the person that will make this legal. Get up and, and also vote. Don't just say, oh, I may, I'm going to vote for him, and then you go in, you vote Labor or Liberal. That's idiotic. Vote for the Cannabis Party. If you want this legal, right, you've got to do it. Now, we ourselves are just everyday people, but the everyday people are what matters. So you can actually, if you're medical, you can tell them, okay, this is what happened to me. This is how much it cost me. You can show them a script. I'm going to show them a photo of my medicine on the election day. Last time I showed them a script. And I'll make sure I've got my script there with me. And um, the thing is, if you are actually taking cannabis, right? Yes, you can't drive your car. So what? Don't drive your car. But if you are afraid, and I mean if you are afraid that people are going to see you at the booth, so what? You're just a volunteer. You don't have to be a smoker to volunteer. You might just be someone that agrees that it should be legal. And it should be legal. And I do apologise to those that are saying things in chat. I do apologise, right? Because um, I'm not taking any notice of the chat. And I do apologise, folks. But um, because some of my viewers come from overseas as well. But the thing is, I know I have a lot of viewers here in New South Wales. And those same viewers in New South Wales are the ones that actually we need. Even if you're in another state. Say if you, you're living on the Gold Coast. I, I met a girl this afternoon. I was accidentally um, told that she was volunteering for my area. So I jumped straight on and, um, yeah, said, okay, can you help? Found out she's on the Gold Coast. But she's coming to Tweed to help New South Wales get elected. So it doesn't matter where you're from. If you're from Outback, and, and trust me, we need people in every early voting centre, no matter where it is. Please come and volunteer. We need your help. It was the people at the booze that made the election change. We got more votes than some other parties. Why? Because we manned the booths, we put posters up like all the other the parties, and people were starting to realise because we were there just saying, OK, here, yeah, no, oh, no, 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 I don't want to vote, they'd tell you and everything like that, and say, well, look, this is our story. This is why we jump parties, because me, being a medical legal person that uh, has other issues, I have to take a drug called Endone, right, for pain, right? I can't, I, can't, I can't afford the cannabis all the time. So I'm stuck taking a drug called Endone. Endone is wrecking my kidneys, badly wrecking my kidneys. It's wrecking my liver. But the government gives that one to me for free, yet this, that is $150. That doesn't last you all month. And it, our average cost of cannabis medication to a person is anywhere from $600 a month through to over two and a half thousand. I know one person that's over 3,000. And if I got my CBD oil as well, it's got me why CBD is more expensive than 
the actual uh, TAC ones, and it actually is. It's like 200 something bucks, maybe more. I think it was 300 for mine. If I got that as well, because I didn't fill all my script because I didn't have the money. I had two and a half thousand dollars. I emptied my bank account out so I could actually lower my dose of endone and panadine fort. Now I've done that and I'm able to now slowly use it still and have a much lower dose. But see, I don't want to take it anymore. This is the thing. I do not want to take endone anymore. I really want off this drug. It's killing me. I want to make it so that it's it's free, like the endone is. Endone, they do not charge me one cent. Not one cent for endone. But cannabis, yeah, I've got... I'm not joking about the cost, folks. I've kept the containers, because the containers are pretty good. I use the containers for other things, for storing stuff like silica packs and different things. So, like this... This is... A couple of weeks supply there so as you can see there two there one there oh you've got even more of it there see so this isn't cheap that would last me three weeks there alone that's over 600 something dollars just for those four so you've got to ask yourself what can we do to help because you can't, you can't sit back and say, oh, no, they're, they're going to make it legal. Or, no, they're not going to make it legal. It is up to you to help make it legal. And it really is. I have heard so many people in my life say, oh, oh one day it'll be legal, never be legal. Oh, it should be legal. I heard that one nearly every day. Oh, cannabis should be legal. Yeah, cannabis should be legal. Heard it the other day. I met a man that went to prison for three uh, three years over cannabis. And um, he turned around, was in jail with one of my cousins, uh, six, I think, sixth generation cousin. And we're talking about him. And um, But the thing is, so many people are in our prisons over this. This does not do everything that they, they say it does. There's a thing called... Um, Reefer Madness that was been out there since the early days when they made it illegal and made it so that people didn't go out and chase it, right? They made us out that we were lunatics jumping around and like that. We don't do that. God, I've done so many streams whilst on T50. I don't know if I've got a T50 there somewhere. No, don't have a T50 there. But my oil, I'm on one of the strongest cannabis oils you can actually get. That's that one I take to sleep. And um, because all the flower does, all that, all this flower does, that is to like get me the instant effect that I need while I'm waiting for that two hour wait period while the oil kicks in. And even then, it still only lasts two hours because you'll get two hours out of flower, you'll get generally two hours out of um, the oil that will affect your head and put you into that state where they say you can't drive. But it, on your nerves and on your back, right? This is for the people that don't know anything about cannabis. For your nerves, for people that have severe chronic backburn pain. Trust me, oil, cannabis oil works much better than endone, panadine, fort, and all those other damn drugs they give you for nothing. The ones that are killing you, Cannabis oil and all the other ones are the ones that are good for you. We actually have a medical system in our body. It's called the cannabinoid system, and it's medical. It is designed to help our body heal. This is why I believe that since the 1930s, there are so many people out there that got epilepsy, um, cerebral palsy, and things like that. This cures people with epilepsy. They don't have to take epileptic drugs anymore by simply just taking a couple of drops of oil. So this drug actually does work. See, I'm talking as a patient here and as a volunteer for this party. I've met most of the, the candidates around this area. I missed out on meeting the other candidate the other day because I was really crook. And um, the thing is, we need to actually get out there. We need to volunteer. It's not just the politicians that need to volunteer, it's us. Think about every other political party. What do you see at the election booth every year? You see volunteers like me 
at an election booth saying, here, take this. But, see, the difference is, and this is for the volunteers that are going to volunteer. Say, say hi, introduce yourself to them. Say, hi, my name's Tony. Um, would you like a cannabis party thing? And find out now if they're young, you talk about one subject. If they're older, you talk generally when they're older, talk about the medical side of it because generally most older people have a lot of pain and it goes through this. And the thing is, you go to a palliative care centre, now they prescribe cannabis for you and it works. The reason why they do that is because this drug works and it works well and it does its job. But see, it's not just a drug. It, it's a relaxant, better than alcohol, much better than alcohol. A good example, I, I was a nightclub manager and anybody watching this video that knows me from that area, from the days I used to run the promotions for players, Megadrone nightclubs, I was a manager there for over eight years. And um, the thing, whilst I was there, the whole time, I saw what alcohol did to people. I saw how people turned into idiots, violent idiots to boot, yet everybody I knew that was on cannabis, they were just there, yeah, sitting down having a great time, just enjoying themselves. Because if you smoke too much, right, you don't get the same effect as drinking too much. The difference is between cannabis, once you've hit a certain level that the body needs, and I'm talking about the body needs, right, to fulfill that cannabinoid system. Taking more doesn't do any, oh, sorry. Taking more doesn't do any, any good to you. And um, the thing is, it's sort of, you've got to turn around and you've got to ask yourself, are we going to make it legal, right? Do you want to, do you want to use one of these? Yeah, that's how I take my medicine. And that is a medical device. That is a bong. For those of you that don't know what this is, this is called a bong. This is how, it's a bit dirty at the moment because I haven't cleaned it, um, but it's how we use and consume our cannabis flower. As I said, the cannabis flower is only good for about two hours. And most medical people only use the cannabis flower to kick off the effect so that they're out of pain. It's the what we call the instant pain relief, where the oil is the ongoing pain relief. The oil does come with that same two hour heady effect, but with it, what it does, it turns around and helps you get along with your pain, but it gets to those nerves like the sciatica that I get 24 hours a day. And I have major medical issues with my spine. I've had a cut, I've got a cut that comes along my back, goes zip, 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 zip. It's called the smiley. It was an old fashioned version of when they did a fusion until they learnt to cut it down. And they cut every muscle in my back. And because of that, my back got worse. And the thing is, I have suffered 24-7 pain ever since. I now have a permanent nerve pinched at L5-S1. I have a permanent nerve pinched at L4, uh, L3-S4 L or something. I don't, I'm unsure about the second one. It's only just recently been diagnosed. I suffer with um, two bad knees. I need knee surgery urgently. Um, I need carpal tunnel surgery. I'm old, I'm 61, of course I need surgery to fix all, all the broken parts in the body. And um, the thing is, but what everybody thinks, oh no, it's just gonna be a lot of druggos in politicians. We have politicians that have come from other parties. They still believe in everything they have fought for. We still believe in everything else as well. But we, yes, we are pushing the cannabis issue. Why? Because we need it legalised so so many people stop going to jail. So many people can actually get free cannabis or are able to grow their own. Because to actually make cannabis oil, right, all you've got to do, you just boil your flour in coconut oil. That's it. And you have the exact same oil that they charge you $150 to two, $300. My very first cannabis medication my very first one that I got as a legal cannabis user was $600 for 60 mils. That's equivalent to about two bottles of the thing that would have cost me 300 now. But it was seriously $600 for a bottle. Uh, I couldn't believe it. it sort of, and it, that was just totally out of my reach. So 
I got sick and tired of all the government promising this, promising that. And it's wrong because all these things that they promise, they never come through. Trust me, you put us into power, and I guarantee you that our politicians will do something because they want, us, they want this shit to stop. They want this illegal prohibition. Now, I'll give you a couple of ex examples of countries. One, the first example is America. They were the ones that started this ridiculous prohibition. And it's antiquated. It's j and it was started because of the paper industry and oil industry. And, um, and I forgot to send everybody a copy of the link. And I do apologize. I'm streaming and all my regulars don't even know that I'm streaming. So if you just bear with me a moment. I'm just going to get an address for everybody. And I'm going to plug it into the... Um, into the thing so that uh, everybody can actually watch it and uh, so just bear with me a moment everybody there's going to be a little click here and there uh, unfortunately it's just the way it is uh, I'm just going to put it into the thing so those of you that aren't already watching uh, yeah so I'm just going to tell them I'm streaming now but the thing is like we're very few people trying to do the work of hundreds and hundreds of people and it's um yeah we need help it's that simple we need help to do what we can because most of us manning these booths are medical people we've got injuries we're in pain and yeah we can't stand up for long periods of time we've got to swap those booths where there's medical people and you need two three maybe four people so that it, at least there's one up at all times. And um, the thing is, it's sort of, uh, why is it that things don't go right when you want them to go right? And um, I just need the link. I've just got to get this link for them, folks. I do apologise. So that um, one person, as I said, one person can truly make a difference. And you really can make that difference, folks. By all you've got to do is just simply volunteering, and by that by that volunteering that you pop out and you actually get there and you see that um, you are doing one this. person. Oh, sorry, said, one person sure can truly make a difference. Sorry, I forgot about that. But the thing is, with it, you have to ask yourself, right? Do you want cannabis to be legal? Yeah, I'm going to tell you now, if you are a cannabis smoker, you are going to, and sorry, I've got to look from screen to screen because I'm actually, this is my home studio and it is actually a recording studio, so I've got monitors over here, monitors over there, so please forgive me. But the thing is, we are need, in need of volunteers, folks. We need them in Newcastle, we need them out back, we need them up, in, uh, up near Queensland border, we need them near the Victorian border, we need them near the South Australia border. We need these booths man. And I know for a fact, trust me, because 99% of the people I know are smokers. There are so many smokers out there that people don't even realise how much it is. This is why the, the police don't want to give it up, because they make so much money out of us. And the thing is, we are just normal people that are sick and tired of being sent to jail and everything. As I said, I met somebody that went to jail for three years. Uh, fair enough. Yes, he was growing a plant. Um, doesn't do it anymore. He's too scared to. But the thing is, I've met plenty of people over the years that have grown. Where do you think I got it from before I came medically legal? The thing is, it's sort of, we've got to get it from somewhere. But if we don't, get it legal, we are going to have to always risk that. I don't, because as I said, I'm medically legal. I do not have to worry about that anymore because of the simple fact that I now go through doctors who prescribe it to me for pain, and I go through, I do everything that I have to, I make sure that there is nothing actually happening with it, I make sure that it's good quality gear, 
Because the unfortunate part about it is we go through the criminal element, and there is a criminal element out there, there always has been, and we're trying to get rid of that criminal element um, because the ones that do it just for medical, uh, so that they are, they are now currently called criminals, when they're not, all they're doing is growing medicine that they actually physically need. And that medicine that they need is important to them because you need it for your system, you need it to help, you need it to get out there. But all these people that need it for recreation, that want to come home and relax, right? You think about it. What's the first thing you do when you get home? You just want to relax. You just want to sit back and relax and calm down, right? To the mo at the moment, the only things that are legal for a person to sit back and relax is a drug called alcohol that can, one, kill your liver. Yes, my liver's partially responsible for my liver is alcohol because, as I said, I ran a nightclub for over eight years. Oh, I ran other clubs as well. But um, for th that complex, I did eight years. But the point is that turns people into idiots and drunks and everything. There's fights, violence. I have never, to this day, seen one person ever use cannabis and become violent. To this day, never. Um, yes, there are violence in the drug gangs over in the cartels over, over the overseas because they don't want this legal. They want this kept illegal so that they can make all the profits on it and uh, keep us, yeah, in the situation we're in because then we don't have that problem of... Um, thing but when it comes and sorry if I keep on saying thing that I started saying that to um, see if I could do something and it worked but yeah I keep on saying it myself now but the point is cannabis has been around look at the images behind me these are ancient images oh, I wouldn't call them ancient. some of these are over a hundred years old cannabis used to be freely available on shelves and what a lot of people don't realize folks what a lot of people don't realise is the simple fact that it was made illegal for one reason and one reason only, because it threatened the paper mills, it threatened the timber industry, it threatened the oil industry cartels. They got together and they worked out a plan because back in that days, some of these people were actually American politicians. Then, because the Americas did it, everybody else followed suit. Now, that's America out of the way. Then we've got Thailand. Thailand was the one where you could go to jail for a, a, virtually a lifetime. They've still got very harsh drug laws, but you, you can walk into a market and buy it in a market freely. You can smoke it in the street. The police don't infor aren't enforcing it anymore. They're enforcing the dangerous ones, but they're not enforcing the cannabis one anymore but because it's semi-legal. And the thing is, nearly every other country has legalised cannabis for recreation use. And I can tell you now, it doesn't cause paranoia. For those of you that think it causes paranoia, it does not. The paranoia comes from one thing and one thing only. The fear of being arrested. That's it. It is a fear of going to jail. That is where the power, oh God, oh no, the cops, cops, oh God, oh no, the cops are here, quick, hide it, hide it, hide it. I don't have to worry about it now. The day I got my first script, right? oh, the big, the big jars are great first, all the little shit, absolutely brilliant. I got nuts and screws and washers and bloody, you name it. Uh, sort of got parts for me, I've got parts for me vape in there and everything like that. And there are different ways to actually um, take your medicine, right? I'm not driving anywhere. So I'm actually going to show you me taking cannabis medication so that you can actually see that it doesn't change me under any circumstances. This 75% THC, I don't have much left. It's got to last me till tomorrow. But um, normally that would only last me one, maybe one more session for about two hours. But go away. And the point is that it doesn't change you, folks. It really, really doesn't. 
Now, I haven't had a smoke in weeks because I've been saving this up until I got it was in pain, and there I am in pain now. I've been in pain all day because I've been crook. But this is pretty much it. You can mix your um, cannabis resin, whatever, with uh, vape oil, and simply you just push the button. Vaping, you notice I'm not coughing my guts up as much. Um, because I'm, I'm making one properly. And I used my cannabis flour, made a bit of resin, and did it. And it was legal flour, as you said. There's my flour. So, it's just a normal vape. You just mix your, your th stuff with resin or things and you can actually get them through Medican and all the other medical places your doctor everything like that um, this is if you don't like the vapes that they make so I get the it was a I can't remember the name of the resin and I mix my resin with that and I didn't like that one so what I did I just got the flour that I did like just squished it up with a heat roller got the resin out of it mixed it with this and this is 75% resin and 25% of um, the vape oil And already, my pain's gone. That's it. Kills the pain. That's it. I can't drive my car tonight. Yeah, so, yeah, I know that. But the point is, we need better driving laws where people aren't penalised for using medicine. Like, I can take endo and drive six hours later, not a problem. I take this, I can't drive for a few days. And I don't need to drive. But um, I won't need to drive till Monday, and I won't be using it until Monday. And um, but the thing is, I've got to go back on to the dangerous one, endone, panadine, fort, all those things, which are killing. As I said, are killing my kidneys. They are responsible for half of my problems, and like because of what endone has done to me. And this is no joke, folks. That is a daily dose of medications that I now have to take because my kidneys, my liver, and everything are failing. But whilst I was on cannabis over Christmas, I got better. Actually got better. Um, my liver readings were a hell of a lot better than they were. My kidneys are, are now just yeah, iffy. They're not bad. They're bad, but they're iffy bad. Um, so they have improved. Uh, I got, um, I think it was, I got seven texts from my doctor that were all to come in for an appointment, like, because my GP was excited. My GP was actually excited that my results came back good. I was still sick, but the, the point is, I knew that I was getting better because I felt it. Okay, now, these are all the same day, so they are there, there's a, a total of eight, actually eight texts from the doctor telling me to come in and see the doctor. And I'm thinking something's really, really wrong. But no, it was the total opposite. I was actually improving. Why was I improving? Because I stopped taking the dangerous endone and started taking this in its place. This helped me heal. And why did it help me heal? Because of the simple fact it helped me heal, folks, because of the fact that we're meant to use this. Do you know that cannabis, and for those Christians out there, this is going to be a huge shock. You cannot make proper holy oil without cannabis. It has now been proven. It was found in the Temple of David, where they made the rem where they made the the oils for the holy oil. Cannabis residue in the oil that was still in the stone. They, and there's records of it. It was called Calamus or something like that. It had a different name. started with C, actually, and uh, I forget the exact name. Of it, but it's even in the Bible. It's been taken and used since the Egyptian days, back in the days of Thoth. Thoth was the um, one of the Egyptian uh, gods. And um, the thing is, it sort of 
you've got to turn around, you've got to ask yourself, are we going to make it legal? Yeah, well, if you sit on your ass and don't do anything, <laughs> I'm, I'm serious about what I'm saying. If you're back there sitting on my ass, oh, they can do it. It's all right. It'll get legalised one day. It won't. If you don't get off your backside and start saying, okay, we need to help, it's never going to get done. It's the same as now. We have more members jumping parties to our party. I forget how many it was. I, I know I know of three for sure that have moved parties. And um, there is an actual politician that has moved parties and is now for us. And the thing is, folks, they are normal politicians. The politicians we have are normal people. Yes, we consume cannabis. But every other politician more than likely consumes alcohol, most probably takes um, painkillers if they're in pain. But when they should be taking this, the most healthy drug you can actually take, and shouldn't even be called a drug because our body needs this. Um, it was once called manna. It was what was given to Moses and everything. And when you think about it, there's no other plant that this could have been manna. Um, my, my family have called it manna for years. My mum always called it manna because it's the only plant that could have come from God because of one fact. You can eat it. You can medicate with it. You can build with it. Everything the Israelites needed back then could have been supplied by this plant. And now it's showing up because manna was used in holy water, holy oil. It was dissolved. And there's plenty of script on how to make holy oil, how the manna was dissolved. But when they found David's temple and they found the cannabis in David's temple where they made the holy oil and holy water, it was cannabis. So that was the pretty much the fact that sealed it. So to all you Christians out there that think this is wrong, sorry if you're using holy oil and holy water. It's not really holy water if you don't have cannabis in it. Because our body is meant to consume this. We don't why would God give us a cannabinoid system if we don't have it? We need it in our system for our body to work properly. And when you have it in your system, your body does work properly. As I said, I was only on it for a month and a half, and all of a sudden my doctor's texting me, come into the surgery, come into the surgery, to tell me that I'm getting better. This was a shock. And trust me, my my liver and kidneys were that bad, and st my kidneys are still almost that bad, but they're getting better. And it's only through this that they are. So please, we need help. We need people to actually go out and man the booth. Yes, it's what, six hours, eight hours, even if it's only four hours. If you are in the Newcastle area or can volunteer in one of these centres, we need you and you need to contact me. My number will be put into the volunteering section. So can you please contact me because I've taken over these four booths so that if you can help at all, please contact me. Let me know. Uh, let me know where you want to go or anything like that. Or even if you don't come from Newcastle and you are say live in Toronto or you live out up at Beresfield, but you don't want to be seen up at Beresfield or out at Toronto, Give me a ring. Come and volunteer in one of my, one of the the booths that I'm in charge of now. So please come and help. We need as many of you as you can. And uh, most of the people that are actually going to be watching this video are currently all cannabis users, and I know they are cannabis users uh, because they're part of our party. And as you can see, do I look different to when I first was? My voice tone is still the same. My attitude is still the same. And yet, here it is, I've used cannabis. It doesn't change you folks. And that is the instant one. This is the one that works straight away. I've got the heady effect, yes, I don't deny I have that heady effect. But it doesn't change you. You are the same person. And as you can see, I'm not hiding. I don't care. And I had a couple of people walk up to me at my local booth and they said, we know where you live. And I said, yeah, everybody knows where I live. I live in the Lord Mayor's home in Newcastle. So what? The original Lord Mayor's home, by the way. Because um, that's not in Newcastle. That's where I am. And I don't hide from anybody. 
and I don't care what people think. If they know that I use cannabis, for God's sake, I actually stuck one out on my car on the day of the election so people could see it when they're driving past. That doesn't worry me. And yeah, I have the advantage of being medically legal, but I still can be pulled over at any time. I don't. I will not drive. I won't even drive when I'm on end day. So yeah, I don't worry about it. It's sort of because I can always prove that I don't take it. And um, if I'm going to drive a car, I refuse to. And even when it becomes legal, I will still be the same. I do not drink and drive. I do not do any of those things. And I've stuck to that because I like my driver's license. But if you are sitting out there, folks, and you want cannabis legal, I don't care whether you're in Western Australia, New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria, Tasmania, and I can tell you now, I know a hell of a lot of Tassies, Tassie people that uh, smoke as well. I lived down there for a while. But the point is, folks, it's only through the effort that we made at the last election where we got more votes than a lot of parties. I think we even beat, I, I know, I, yeah, I think we beat about four of the reasonable sized parties and we had more votes for them. Why? Because we were manning the booze. We were out there just, yeah, kind of cannabis party or you thing. And But with me, what I tell everybody, introduce yourself, say hi, how you going? Um, we're just out here, we're promoting the cannabis party, rah, rah, rah. And you have your spiel all worked up in the morning before you go out there. You go over it with everybody and you talk about it. And you tell them your story. I say, I say, look, I jump parties because of the simple fact that Endone is killing me. And I had my script with me and I showed them my script and willing to show it. And making sure all the posters were there. I did all that. Um, because the girls were, the girls came while I was actually went home and got changed and everything like that. I originally wasn't planning to man the booth because, as I said, I had just gotten out of hospital after a heart attack and it was my first day out of hospital. And um, But I was willing to make sure our booth got posters up at it. So I went down there at six o'clock in the morning and stuck my posters up. Next thing I know, I'm getting a call from one of our one of our members. Um, oh, you ready yet? And I'm going, oh, what? Are you coming down to the booth? And I was going, yeah, uh, okay, yep. Yeah. And um, so I ended up working down with these two wonderful people all day. Um, and I met other people that, from the other parties. They were great. They all used our shelter for the, for the rain because it started raining. And um, the point is, folks, it's, sort of, it's, it's, the, it's the bodies we need at those booths. If you really want this to be legal, don't just, and don't just volunteer, vote for our party. And if you want cannabis legalised finally, the only way it's going to happen in New South Wales, because we have a government at the moment that is anti-cannabis, so to every cannabis user in this state, now is the time to stand up. Now. It's the election. This is the one that can make the difference. We have enough members out there running to make a change in the way this plant is used and it should be legal we need to also change some laws we need to open the prison doors to every cannabis user that has been arrested over the years if they are still in prison they need to be let go they really do and they should be let go for crying out loud they're by the right most of the time i've ever used cannabis i've used cannabis since yeah an early age i've even ate and eaten the flour when i was young I think I was in seven, and my mum can't be arrested. She's dead, so she's gone. And um, but this is back in the day when our family it, there was a, a bucket of it somewhere in the house. I don't know where that was, but always on our table was a bowl of heads sitting on the table. Us kids knew we weren't allowed to touch it, but the thing is, after you process it, you run it through alcohol and you remove everything from it and redry it out, then you just have plant matter. That plant matter can be eaten and it doesn't affect you. Trust me, we never got affected by it. Mum used to throw it in rock cakes. And um, I know that for a fact because I was the one that was putting it in there. I had to measure it out because um, my mum taught me how to cook. I've learned how to cook with cannabis since I was seven years old. I have spent most of my life more using cannabis than a lot of other people. I've spent most of my life 
cooking with cannabis because when and but up until a few years ago i was illegal like everybody else and i found out that it's been legal since 2006 i concentrated on trying to find a doctor then luckily i found a doctor that was in the pa uh, the paper unfortunately he has retired now we have lost a, a, a good cannabis doctor and um he just got sick of the shit that he was copying from his medical partners and everything. So he ended up retiring because they were giving a shit the fact that he was prescribing cannabis to patients. But the point is, there is nothing wrong with this drug. This kills pain. This helps. It calms you down. If you've had a really stressful day at the end of the day, trust me, I would sooner do that. do that then drink a scotch i yeah since i've been on the meds the cannabis meds i i don't think i've had a drink at all oh, i'm sorry i had a couple at christmas i think i had four drinks over the whole christmas period because why i've been using this And that works better than alcohol. It works better than everything. And as I said, look at the images behind me. Those images show you how old this plant is. That it was once legal. But the only way we are going to make it legal, and I know I keep on saying it, the best way to get someone in, something into somebody's head is to keep on saying it, folks. We need volunteers. If you are a recreational user, if you believe that it should be legal, if you believe that you need it for medical reasons, one go to Medican or one of the other cannabis doctors that are around now. Um, Medican is most probably the best one I found. They were the cheapest and best. Um, very quicker, they're quicker than everybody else. One in surgery wanted me to pay 360 just to go and get a script. Some doctors are taking advantage of it and charging people a fortune just to get a script. Um, but there are places like Medican that are great and they you do have to pay a fee you pay a telehealth fee that's it yeah because your appointment is over the yeah over the airways you're talking to a doctor and it's a real doctor you have to pre-send all your stuff to them everything trust me um mine was massive that's my medical file file folks that's about they're all the tests saying my kidneys are shot my liver shot uh, more about my kidneys and livers all my labs everything like that and i sent all of it I sent the whole lot to the doctors as you can see it's still neatly there and um, i haven't even put it away yet it's been sitting there for a little bit too long but the point is i turned around and I spoke, and I had to get a new doctor because my last one retired, as I told you. But Medicam was great. They were straight up front and everything. And there are other ones out there that are just as good. And um, you just have to make sure that the doctor has the, the proof that you need them. And um, if you've got any condition that is in this, one of, you can have it for one of 42 reasons. Pain is one of the major ones trying to get off drugs like endone is another one they are still valid reasons so if you suffer from pain you suffer from any of those yes go and see a doctor one of the cannabis clinics around there are plenty of them now but you will have to pay a great deal of money for your medicine and this is one of the reasons why we're trying to get into parliament is so that we can change these ridiculous prohibition laws so that we can stop people going to jail over for carrying a joint. Uh, I know a guy, and I'm serious, I know a guy that went to jail for a joint. It's just one joint, went to jail. And the thing is, it's sort of, it's wrong. It's sort of, it is, it's sort of like, they prohibited out, they, they made alcohol prohibition everything. But the thing is, back in those days, everybody drank alcohol. But it, the problem is with cannabis, there's a stigma on it. And this is where a lot of, and I've been asked to address this stigma. Don't be afraid if you want to help 
but you don't want to be seen in your local area. As I said, if you are in another district, please volunteer to go to another district, but please come and help. The more of you helping us man the polling booths uh, on Saturday and the next lot, which will be on the, with the actual election, I think is only 11 days away as well. Um, I can't think what the exact day of the election is, but um, it's sort of, we need the assistance to actually get out and do this. So we've got booze everywhere. Uh, as I said, I'm looking after the general local area. I've got four booths that I've got to look after. And um, it sort of, we, it, we need the volunteers. We need you to contact us and come along and join the Legalised Cannabis Party. It's sort of, all you gotta do is type into YouTube, Legalised Cannabis Party Australia, and you'll go straight to our website. It's also called, was called the Hemp Party, the Cannabis Party. We've had a few names over it, but this is the, the new name to the party. And there it is there, that one, Legalised Cannabis Australia. And the thing is, we need to get it out there and get it over with so that you don't get arrested. You are not at risk of being arrested for it. You get medication you need cheaper and we finally get rid of a prohibition that should have never been put in place before. Should never have been put in place. Cannabis is the one thing that should and always have never been made illegal. It has affected people's health and it's been proven that since the people now using it again, their conditions are clearing up. I know so many people that were epileptic they haven't had a simple epileptic fit since they've been using cannabis. The problem is we're paying out a massive fortune for it, and that's wrong. you like, the endone drug costs more if it's bought legally without being on the PBS or anything like that. It costs more than what it does to, um, sorry, the cannabis costs more than the endone. And even on the endone, when it's not on the PBS, it's still expensive, but it's not as expensive as we've got to pay for cannabis. But, and it doesn't do that. There's no paranoia. That's all shit. And it's been proven, even coppers have said over the years, the ones that do get arrested for driving while using cannabis, they're actually better drivers than uh, normal drivers because you're actually more alert. And as you can see, the only difference with me is my alertness is there. I'm there, I'm looking, I'm learning, I'm studying things in the background that you can't see. And... I'm trying to simply just make you realise that you don't have to volunteer at a booth near you. Just volunteer for crying out loud. We have so many booths that need filling even this weekend because if we can get people at these booths handing out and putting up posters, we are going to increase our voting for the Cannabis Party. It's going to help the party and to those of you that are already in the party, please come and help. Please. And those of you that aren't in the cannabis party yet, for crying out loud, let's get rid of this two-party system and put an independent party in power. Yeah, okay, so what? We're relaxed. I'm relaxed. It's sort of, but I'm still doing everything that I normally do. I'm still talking in the exact same tone. I've had two doses of my medication and... I'm still here. I'm not running around. I'm not paranoid. A police officer can come. Mr. Avery would like to see you there. All I've got to do is walk out and say, not a problem, officer, because I've got a script. I've got letters. I've got the whole lot. And it is advisable to always get a letter off your doctor as well that you are taking cannabis for medical reasons. And um, But once you have that script, you don't have to fear. That fear is gone. But the problem is, if you're a user that isn't medically legal, you are at risk of jail. You are at risk of being arrested for using it. You are at risk if you grow it. Oh, God, you'll go to jail for three years, four years if you grow it. And that's the thing. It's sort of, it's wrong that we should have to go through this, folks. We should, it's, this prohibition, the time for it has ended. The, the prohibition should end. And we've got idiots in power with this, like, 
we all know what this current government has done. We've just got rid of one Premier and got a Premier that's even bloody worse than that Premier. But the thing is, it's sort of, we've seen corruption in this government. We've seen corruption all our, throughout our lives. Corruption's never going to go away. But the problem is we need to make it so that we've got a party in there that actually wants to do something that's going to help people. Can you imagine a country where everybody is drunk 24-7? Oh, that reminds me. I know that country's name. It's called Russia. Look at the Russian men. You ask any Russian woman what Russian men are like. Yet you ask somebody that's a cannabis... The, they're married to a cannabis smoker or a cannabis user, you'll be told that they are so pleasant, they're so happy, they're never violent and things like that. Why? Because their stress is gone. But at the moment, yeah, we're going through the stress of having to pay out dollar after dollar after dollar after dollar. Um, I managed to, um, yeah, sell one of me plant, one of me, um, I grow dragon fruit. I sold a dragon fruit the other day, just enough to get one script filled. And um, $153, I think it is. So, um, and so I'll have medicine when it turns up. And that's the other part. It takes forever because chemists don't carry it in stock. You've got to order it from the where They order it from the warehouse and get it in because they don't like carrying it on time. Doctors don't like prescribing it. Do you, do you know that every single doctor in this country has a legal right to prescribe this drug? Every doctor. Every single doctor in this country has a right to prescribe this drug. All they have to do is fill out a little TGA form. They tell you, oh, all that $360 fee is to cover that cost. See, they're following Medicare because Medicare charges X amount of money to get your script. But that is for your telehealth appointment because you're not actually at the doctor's surgery. But when you go to a doctor's surgery, you shouldn't have to be paying $360. I didn't. But unfortunately, my doctor retired, unfortunately. So, yeah. But the thing is, cannabis is good for you. And I don't care what anybody else says. I know it is. Because even my doctor got excited about the fact that my liver readings were so low that it was an excitement for her to to ring me, uh, to text me, say, come into surgery. Then she's read the next result, it's better. Next result was better. Next result was better. A total of eight results. Everything was better because I was on the cannabis. And uh, there's no other explanation. Let's just say, when I first went to my, the new doctor surgery where I'm going, that doctor was in disbelief about cannabis. But she has seen with me just doing, I call it my withdrawal period because um, I know that I have to go back on endone whether I like it or not because I can't afford it anymore. I'm lucky to be able to afford this. If I hadn't have sold that dragon fruit plant, I wouldn't be able to afford it. So the thing is, it's sort of, I now have to go back on the endone. And over a period of time, I'm going to wind up back up on that big dose again. And hopefully by then I've saved up another couple of thousand dollars so that I can go back on the medication that I need. But the thing is, folks, unless we get help, unless you get off your backside and help, and yeah, I'm being blunt, we need you to come and help. I'm asking you to come and help. If you are a cannabis user, if you are a medical cannabis patient, trust me, if you're a patient in a wheelchair, as I said, I've worked with two beautiful ladies on the day medical patients that use cannabis, one in a wheelchair. We were there and we still manned the booth. And this is why we did better in the election, in the federal election. But we didn't have every mo booth moved, manned, sorry. But we need a man this time, folks. What is it, a day out of your life? It's on a Saturday and trust me, it's actually great fun. If you've got other people there, you've got someone to talk to, you get to meet people, and if you do it like I did, see, because this is where I come from. I used to be a street spruker. I started out, how I got my job in the nightclub. I was a man dressed in a three-eyed alien suit. Dead set, I'd have. I, on my forehead, pink and green hair, pink and green outfit, those triangular shoulders and everything like that. And I'd be stopping Japanese saying, Tomale, te agelo. 
I still know those words to this day. Stop, hands up. I had a little toy space gun and I'd say, doors or doors or doors or come into the thing. But whilst I was there, I get a lot of people coming asking me, oh, mate, do you know the best nightclub on the Gold Coast? So I sent out, because most of them were girls that were asking me that question. And uh, I'd say, yeah, I'd send them to my club, players. And um, that's where I drank at the time. I, and I'd rock up there in my suit even. And this one night, I got over 300 people through the door and 30 girls. I'm serious, 30 girls looking for me because I'd made 30 days, dates. I didn't even realise I'd done that. But the boss got wind of it, the owner of the nightclub. Next thing I know, the actual general manager at the time came down and said, look, uh, Dieter wants to see you. So I went up and saw him. And instead of being in trouble, because I thought, I oh, know I'm going to get banned because of all the girls. And um, he said, can you teach people to do what you did? I said, yeah, I can teach them the heartbeat. It's easy. Just be nice, show them what to do, and it's dead easy. He said, how long will it take you to come up? And I said, oh, mate, I have to give a notice. He said, look, I've already spoken to your boss, sorted it out with my previous boss. Next thing I know, that night, I'd actually started working in the nightclub. But when I first got there, the old promotion manager worked out and gave me a dirty look. He was the one that actually got me to hand out the tickets. I also was given a $300 plus pay packet for that previous night for the people I put through that door because uh, I'd sent over 300 people that night through the door and this is when the boss knew that I knew what I was talking about but all I do was just be myself that's all I was being it was myself that's all we ask you to be yourself to talk to people and don't be afraid to talk to people just get out there and talk to people and it's a great fun day. It's spruiking is it's sort of it's not like hey come over here. Politicians are not politics is not like that. Say hi, how are you going? Would you like this is the cannabis party? Yeah. And if they're willing to talk to you by introducing yourself, you are putting that opening for them to talk to you. And that's what you want. You want that conversation. And that conversation normally won't last longer than thirty seconds. But it's enough time for you to tell your story and why you jump parties, why you're now um, a cannabis member, uh, like a legalised cannabis party member. And it's that simple. And it actually works. We proved it at last election. I know for a fact I got people there. And I even had people coming up to see me. My um, sister-in-law came up to see me. My nephew came up to see me. And, like, I was at, what, three blocks away from my own house. Didn't worry me. Didn't worry me. And yeah, I had one or two idiots. One or two idiots. Oh, I know where you live, mate. Yeah. I said, don't worry, mate. I don't care. I've got a script that says I'm legal. And that's it. But the problem is, this is where a lot of people think that they can't do it because they don't want to be seen. As I said, like if you're living at Toronto, come to Newcastle, go up into Maitland or do one of the other areas. We need people in every single area. Contact the Cannabis Party on the Legalised Cannabis uh, Party. I'm just trying to get it up at the moment. And um, so we've got this. I'm trying to get a thing. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the description, folks. So if you can volunteer, contact the party, and um, we can take it from there. So those of you that can help, please help. Those of you that, even if it's just going to the thing and helping put up posters early in the morning and can't take them down in the afternoon, or coming up and saying, oh, look, do you guys need lunch or something like that? Making sure our volunteers are fed and got water. Um, because like me and like the others, we stayed there all day, but we looked after each other. We jumped into different areas and um, one, someone went and got coffee and someone else would go and get coffee and different things. I went home a couple of times because I was lucky. I sort of only lived down the road. And um, I was lucky enough to get up there and actually... Um, go down home, change my clothes, because at the time I was still, no, Emmy, no, no. Sorry, I've got a dog annoying me. 
But yes, if you can volunteer, folks, please volunteer. We need as many as we can get. We need as many of you, whether you are medically legal, whether, especially if you are medically legal, especially. Um, because, yeah, your story matters. And these, the medical legal stories, mate, are more convincing than anything. But even if you are just a recreational user, say, look, it's time this prohibition ended. It's been stopped because of this, stopped because of that. And just talk to people. As long as you just talk to them in regard to the rules, don't break any rules, it's, you're right as rain. And so sort of you're going to reach a lot of people. And even if you're just handing out leaflets, you are still rich, even if you don't want to talk to a single person. Just please, hand out the tickets. Please. The more of you, the merrier. The more booze we can get people at, we have more chance of getting it legal, finally. And it's the only way that we can finally get it legal, is we're the ones that are going to have to stand up. And if we don't stand up, it's not going to become legal because everybody says, oh, no, oh, I'll let them do it. Oh, it's all right. It's not going to happen yet. But if people keep on doing that, it's going to keep on happening. Think, okay, I'm going to give you a really good example of it. One man pretty much stood up to one of the most powerful men in the world in his life. And he freed a nation. He freed Israel. His name was called Moses. Fair enough, he had some help from God. But the thing is, he did, and he stood up and did something. He changed the world. I've changed some stuff in the world. And I can honestly say this. Everybody out there that's on Social Security benefits or on a pension at the moment can now get two loans per year. In the old days, you used to be able to get $500 every six months. That was it. You got 500 bucks every six months. And you, you got, had to wait 10 days from the date that you were paid, not from the date that you had. It was the most ridiculous system. So it was adding 10 days to it every year. So you'd wait 12 months, then you'd have to add another 10 days. So if you were using it for your rego, it was adding time on it. What did I do? I got on and I wrote to the Australian federal government. And I said, look, this is the problem. This is what it's doing. It's adding 10 days to it every time. And I use it for my rego. It was a very, very simple letter. I didn't just send it to one politician. I sent it to every politician. But... Two weeks later, I got a letter back saying, uh, Mr. Avery, you now can go to Centrelink. You can get two $1,000 loans per year. You have to wait six months between the loans. You don't have to add 10 days to it. You can apply the same day you applied six months earlier. And I know for a fact I did it because that's what I did. I've been a lobbyist for years. And if I can do that, you and you can do it as well by just coming and volunteering it's that simple folks being a volunteer by simply handing out tickets doing what i used to do to earn a living and you go to the gold coast a good example anybody that's been to the gold coast you walk around the gold coast and there's kids handing out tickets everywhere tickets to nightclubs tickets to events tickets to this they're all like discounts or um sometimes you get we gave them away get in for free but it's that simple. It's called word of mouth advertising. And word of mouth advertising will work better on the day. And it only ever works better on the day. So can you imagine if we get every booth manned? Every booth. And that's what I'm pushing for. Every single early voting booth this Saturday and every single voting booth next week. Because of the simple fact, without the volunteers, we've got no one knows that we're, the legalisation party is really existing in some areas. Because it's never been advertised. The posters haven't been put up. And my camera keeps on bloody moving for some unknown reason. So, even if it's just to get posters up at those booths, but with you being there and presenting yourself and having the courage to stand up for something. This is the time to stand up. And see, in the world, 
the only time we stand up. But it's not a protest. We're not going there to protest. We're going there to do the same as everybody else. Legalise cannabis party. That's it. Yes. Would you like a leaflet? Bang, 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 bang. Hi, how are you, how are you going? You can introduce yourself and everything. It's up to you. But the moment you have made the introduction and that connection, that's when you can start talking. And as long as you keep it within all the election rules, which is quite easy to do, because uh, all you're doing is telling them your particular story. Telling them, I told them why I jumped parties, because I got sick of all the crap from all the other parties. They say one thing, never did anything. I guarantee you our party says something, it's going to get done. And I guarantee you the pro, if we get enough in there, and, there, and here's the thing, there is enough of us out there that are running that could actually change this government altogether. There is that many of us now running. We have enough candidates to make a change for once. For once, we have enough candidates, but it's up to you. It's up to the recreational users. It's up to the medical users out there. We need you to stand up and actually do something, folks. We need you to get out there and say, I'm going to help. Simple. It's a day out of your life. Maybe two if you volunteer for the big election. Because then we've got even more booze to me. It's going to be even harder to get a man. And I'm asking you all now to come and vote. And I know this is most probably the longest stream I've done in a long while. But the thing is, why? Is I'm trying to reach everybody. And I know everybody doesn't watch at the same time. So I've kept the stream going for a little while and everything like that. But it's given me a chance to tell my story. It's given me a chance to tell you other people's stories and different things. But you think about it. One man once freed a whole nation against one of the most powerful tyrants of everything. Fair enough, he had God's help, but he still freed that nation because he listened to somebody and he stood up. He could have said, no, nah, I don't want to do it, God. He could have done that. And then the Israelites might still be in slavery to this day. But we don't know. And you don't know until you stand up. And all I'm doing is asking you to stand up at a polling booth and hand out some leaflets, put up some posters, that's all I'm asking you to do. It's You'll meet people at every polling booth. There's going to be other people. There's going to be every other party is going to be, have their people there. Most other parties will have their people there. But the big ones always have their people there. Don't worry about them. Um, and if you are there, you've got to, you must follow the election rules. You must follow where you can put posters, i.e. you can't put it where the Electoral Commission puts their poster and things like that. You've got to be X amount of feet away from there. And then you just go nuts everywhere else, as long as you keep within the rules. I made sure that my local area had booze everywhere. Half, well, more than half a carrot and smoke pot. Um, and more than half of everywhere smoke or use cannabis as a recreational drug. This is the day that you need to stand up. This is the day that you need to make a change. This is the day that only you can make that difference at the election. Let's end this prohibition once and for all. Fair enough, it's only New South Wales for at the moment, and we're going to have to keep on fighting and fighting. Canberra has already got it. Think about it. Canberra's can, the Canberrans can smoke where all the politicians live. Yeah, think about it. That sort of... Um, Victoria thinking about legalising it. They're, they're actually, um, that's about most probably about the only thing that I like about that that dude is he's now thinking about actually legalising it. Um, but we need to legalise it everywhere. Why should one state in this country, why should one state have legal cannabis? And it's the state where all the politician, all the big federal politicians live. Why? Because their children can't get arrested now. And... People in Canberra can grow two plants. Why can't we? Why can't we go out and put two plants in our garden, grow enough medication to last us so we're not paying $600 for a month's supply of this stuff? It's ridiculous. And as I said, it can cost you over up to three grand. 
depending on what medications you are on. When I'm on it, I generally have a, a lower dose medication for the day. I have a lower dose uh, flower medication that just lasts me for the two hour period while I'm waiting for that oil to kick in. And yeah, it sort of, it costs money. It needs to be either put onto the PBS, regardless. And they're saying, and I've been through every level of government, trust me, I really truly have. I've been lobbying this government, the previous government, the previous government before that. I've been to state, federal. I've been to the TGA, I've been to the health department, and I keep on getting given the runaround. But how it boils down to, the TGA will eventually tell you that no, it's not their fault, it's all the manufacturers haven't applied for it. Why should they have to apply? It's, a, it's one drug that is uniform across the board. It has different levels of THC, yes. But it should be up to the people what dose they want to take. If they want to take a strong one, the thing. But as a medical thing, yeah, at the moment we're restricted. The, the doctors say, okay, well, you can smoke this much. You can have that one, i.e., when it comes to my oil, when I've got it and can afford it, it's the strongest one on the market. It's called, uh, I think I take the, um, I can't think of the brand. It's the um, Canatec, Canatec brand. I take Canatec Topaz T50. It's the strongest they make it. They could actually make it stronger. They've only got to put more THC in it. Because when they make it, they water it down with oil. Um, because when you make it fresh, I guarantee you, you've got really good oil and it kills your pain instantly. Go away, please. You only need one or two drops where some of them you need a mill, a whole mill. Go away, Emerald, now. I know something is out there and I know Diamond is eating his dinner. Sorry, I have my dogs want to do a changeover and everything. So, but the thing is, we need to turn around and make that change ourselves. And it is only us, the volunteers, the cannabis users, those of you that have one of these sitting in your home, I can show you because that's my medical device. It's not, it is legal for me to, it is 100% legal for me to use it. Uh, I can't use that in public. I can use that in public. I can actually use that in public, but I can't use that in public. That's wrong. Why can't I use that? The same thing. Uh, I've got to admit, this is better for my throat. That is a bit rougher on the throat. But why is this illegal when that's legal? Stupid. See, there's so many stupid laws out there. But until you, the volunteers, the recreational users, the medical users, you are the ones that will make the difference in this election. And I mean, you can make that difference. And a lot, of people, a lot of people know this about me. I actually have an email, remove Kevin07 at, oh, yeah. And um, I have that email address for a reason. Because back then, uh, one man sort of saw something that a certain politician did. So he informed the party that he was a member of, which I was. I was a member of the Labor Party. I saw something that a certain Prime Minister named Rudd did. I called him out on it and um, I went to every phone number I could ring on that day. I rang everybody and I said, look, and I only spoke to the underlings. And I said, look, this just happened. Here it is. Here's the evidence. I told them where to get the evidence, everything like that. Within the next day, they all had an email from me with the link to the evidence. And uh, the day after that, he was removed from power. They walked in and removed him from power because he shouldn't have been prime minister. He didn't deserve to be prime minister. And um, yeah, so it was it was minor, but it was major at the same time. He he also screwed up a couple of promises, and I think it was the, the certain other things that he did that actually made the final decision. But me, I wrote to them. And that was the end. Remove Kevin 07. I made up T-shirts. I did everything. And um, I didn't expect it to work that quickly. But it did. It was after I'd pointed out what he did that everything changed. And I did that. And uh, like, here I am. My name's Anthony Avery. I once removed a Prime Minister. 
by just pointing something out to the rest of the party because he did what he did was wrong um, like I actually called somebody out this morning I actually found online a YouTuber I actually called them out sent a letter to the governor of that state and to the uh, FBI because I actually saw a YouTuber major breach of uh, child support secrecy um, and major breach and so yeah I pointed that I did a video stream you can go back and watch my last stream um, or video it's out there it's like, oh, I'm not afraid to stand up I'm not afraid to call somebody out there but I'm also not afraid of the government I'm not afraid of the, the, the police I haven't done anything wrong to be afraid of the police and 195% of the police are very nice people very good people uh, I have many relatives that are in the police force. I've got many mates that are in the police force. Um, you've been through the industries that I've been through. You meet a lot of the police, but you meet them on the good side of it. And as I said, they're in my own family as well. But even my own family know that I smoke drugs. They all used to smoke drugs. Now I smoke medication because I'm legal. But the thing is, I'm trying to make you legal. That's the thing. It's... Me, everybody else that's out here, um, Karen Burge, like she is so flat out at the moment, I volunteered to look after these four for her. And um, it's everybody out there, we're working our backsides off. And even though I haven't been out there being um, active until today doing this campaign for getting the volunteers, I've still been actually lobbying the government because that's what I normally do. That's normally my niche. Is I'm the one that rings up the government saying, look, when, when is this going to happen? Look, here's more evidence. And I present them with evidence after evidence after evidence. I've got the Prime Minister's office in my emails. I've got the Health Minister's in my... But nearly every politician in my email address book. Uh, because I've been lobbying them for that long over different things. If I see something wrong, I'm not afraid to stand up and do it. And this is what I'm asking you to do. Don't be afraid anymore. Because if you lose that fear, we will get this legal. Because it's you that will make the difference. It's only you that will make the difference. Joe Blow down the street. And Michael here. And hi, Greg. Oh, g'day, mate. There, actually, one of the first person I was talking about just came into chat. I work with him. Um, he used to be a bar manager up the club I worked at. Uh, Greg, if you can volunteer, by the way, mate. Look, I know we're looking for volunteers down in the Tweed area. Mate, just because you're in Queensland doesn't mean you can't volunteer. Um, so I'm actually addressing someone personally here at the moment. They're in the chat. Um, dude, if you can volunteer, we'd love you to help. We really would. Um, yeah. Uh, contact the New South Wales um, Electoral Commission, uh, not the Commission, the New South Wales Legalisation Party. I will put the link uh, for the party in the chat for you, just you alone, Greg. Contact someone in the party. Um, mate, we need volunteers up your way. And um, please, if you can help, dude, help. So, um, and by the way, the link is in the chat of the video for anybody in New South Wales anybody in the area that wants to volunteer the link is actually in currently in the chat it will be in the description at the end of the video and um, if you want my phone number if you want to volunteer in the Newcastle region it will be in this chat um, in the volunteers for Newcastle and Central Coast uh, I, I am currently putting that in there now oh for Okay, for Newcastle, so, right, it's out there, so those of you, don't ring yet, please, don't ring just yet, um, but it's out there, and um, for those of you that are watching the video, and I know there are quite a few of <laughs> actually watching the video, because I can actually see uh, who's watching the video, and, um, but, those of you out there that want this legalized please come and volunteer we need you we need your help and trust me i'm going to be on here every day doing a stream when i've finished what i'm doing for the day i'm going to get on and i'm going to do a stream to get you guys to volunteer because we need you we really do guys 
And that's how things are done. It's a matter of everybody. It's, um, sorry, someone enjoyed it. Still going. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, um, those of you out there that can help, please come and help us. We need all the help we can get. We need you out there to volunteer. Come and stand up. Do the right thing. It's time this prohibition ended. And this is all you've got to do. Forgive the trowel. I'm dressed like a typical news person. Yeah, the top half is uh, nice, but the bottom half just me trackies. But yeah, all you've got to do is stand up. That's all you've got to do. Sorry, I can't get back any further. That's all you've got to do. Hand that out. Hand this out. Hand that. That's all we need. We just need you to come along and help. And if you are that cannabis user, I think that person that just uh, said they enjoyed the stream, um, Michael, yeah, look, we need everybody. And Michael is a volunteer out there, I know that. And we have members out there and they can't do everything. And that's the thing. It's we are the ones that are the force. We are the ones that are the driving force that are going to make this legal. Because what a lot of people don't realise, a lot of decisions are made at that polling booth that split second before they go in. Because you could be saying, OK, I'm going to vote this party and everything. Because everybody's sick of the two-party systems. <laughs> everybody's sick of it. And um, I know for a fact that a lot of people did actually vote. For carrying, I actually looked at the numbers of the voting booth and they actually jumped. And if you go through, and anybody can go and find these records from that election and the last election, you look at our votings. Why? Because we volunteered and stood and stood at those booths. So by doing that, folks, we can turn around and we can make a change. And it is time for this change. I'm only a volunteer. I'm not a politician. I've had, no, everybody's, every, I've had so many people say, why aren't you running? One, my ill health would not be a good thing. I've had, unfortunately, I've recently had a couple of heart attacks. I'm a stroke victim. Uh, I've got a lot of medical issues. And so I wouldn't be able to bear the, the workload, unfortunately. In my younger days, I would have stood up in a heartbeat if I... Yeah, thought it could was it going to do any good. But the point is, folks, even if you're not a politician, you can make that difference. And you really can make that difference. Just stand up. Say something. Get up. Stand up. And do something and make it legal. Don't just say, it should be legal. It should be legal. Why don't they make it legal? Do you know, and think about it. How many bloody times have you heard those same words? It should be legal. Why isn't it legal? Should be legal. Think about it. How many times have you physically heard those words yourselves? And this is to everybody in all the other countries. Hang on, I've just had my mate up in up in Queensland. Thanks, mate. I have a caravan and outdoor show this weekend. Uh, mate, uh, next weekend, yeah, we still need somebody. Yeah, good. Good on you, mate. Good on you. Okay. we. Um, yeah, Greg, get in contact. I don't know who, who's looking after Queensland. Can you let me know who is looking after the the um, near the Tweed area? I think I know, actually. I think I know. I think I spoke to him. Um, so, I'll, Greg, I'll send you a link. Um, I've, I've still got your email and everything. I've still got your number. I'll send you a link to the person that's actually looking after that area. I'll do a bit of investigation, mate. I'll get you that uh, information to you. So, um, yeah, well, there we go, folks. we just got to volunteer for the main election. Thanks, Greg. You're a lifesaver. And I know this dude will turn up. Um, yeah, so, as I said, you don't have to be in New South Wales to help in this election you just have to be a member of the party and you don't even have to be a member of the party if to help in the thing it's just a body go away please go away i know diamond is sorry my dogs really want to go and eat my other dog's dinner they this happens every night 
But those of you out there, I don't care whether you are a... a um, I'll send it to you directly, Greg, as soon as I'm off the stream, mate. For sure, dude. For sure. So there we go, folks. As I said, we have another one, one more volunteer. I'd love more of you to come and volunteer. Um, so please do so. And if you can get to the New South Wales area, if you're in South Australia, Victoria, and you can come into a New South Wales area, don't just come and volunteer. Join our party. We are making moves and we are getting there. We, we, are, we are changing so much that we have had politicians jump parties and come and join our party. Why? Because they can see a point to our party. And we actually have a point and everybody knows that our point is going to be met. We are going to make sure these laws get changed. And if we can get enough in Parliament, it will happen. But even with minimal in there, it will still make a change. But the thing is, we need this change to happen now. And the only way it's going to happen, folks, is if everybody, you, Joe Blow down the road, Susie up the road, whatever name that works down the pub, everything like that, if you've got Saturday off, please come and help. Please. Come and do your part to make it legal. Stop saying, oh, it should be legal. Yeah, it should be legal. It definitely should be legal. And the thing is, without your help, it's never going to happen. And that's the point. It's you, the politician, that will... Not the politician, sorry. The politicians will make the difference in the, the government, but it's you, the volunteer, that will make the difference to put these people in there. Because if we don't have people at every booth... How are people even going to know that we're really trying to stand up and make a point? If we've got enough... I want I wanted Michael to go and print more posters, but like they're making sure they've got posters and everything like that. But we need every booth covered, and I mean every single booth. The early ones, I believe there's going to be a lot of people voting this weekend. I think there's most probably going to be more this weekend. Um, and everything, and these booths will be full. So you're going to have people in the li in lines out there and everything. So don't be afraid to talk to them, tell them your story. Introduce yourself. Hi, my name's Tony. How you going? Um, this is uh, a leaflet for the Cannabis Party. Um, can I just tell you my story, why I change parties? It's not breaking the rules. All I'm doing is telling them why I left the Labor Party. Why I well, originally started in Liberal, jumped parties, went to Labor. Well, I've jumped between back and forwards between them a couple of times over the years because eventually I lose faith in them but I've lost faith in all of them at the moment all of them I have seriously lost faith in every single major party the green the whole lot even though the greens yes they're for cannabis but I have lost faith in the Labor Party there's no way that I would ever vote Liberal ever again not after Scotty Morrison not after this idiot down in there in Parliament at the moment. We have got to get rid of these people. We really, truly do. And it's time that we put people in there that did something. Now, I know for a fact that my local Labor member, he, well, he told me he did. They put a bill to get cannabis legalised through Parliament and everything like that. But there were so many no's that it never happened. Why? Because there are so many people uneducated out there and they don't know the truth about this plant. And they really don't know the truth about this plant. And that's the thing. It's sort of, it's not our job to educate the people on this plant, but it is our job to make sure they've got a ticket in their hand. And that's all that matters is by getting, well that's, getting something in their hands like that so they can, oh, okay, that's how I do it. Yeah, okay, not a problem. See you later, mate. And that's how long you've got. You have the 30-second period to do everything. And because it's that that makes the difference. It's like when I ran, when I was, when I took over the promotions of the nightclub, right? I did exactly what I did at the mini golf trek. It was called Space Trek, uh, Golf Trek, it was called. And even my nickname to this day, I still rock up. Ah, Captain Golf Trek, how you going? Because as I said, I wore that suit for quite a long period of time. I was up there looking for my son. And um, whilst I was up there, 
I had to work, so I, I'd done costume acting in my life, and I'd done bar work, and just doing a bit of bar work here and there. And but when I could, and found that job as the three-eyed alien, I did that job, and I just stood there. Tomale, toyo age lo, stop hands up. That's all I said in Japanese. Dozo, 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 up the stairs. You'd be surprised how many people I put through that door. I and even then I had less time. A Japanese attention span generally is about 10 seconds because they can't understand English or anything like that. Yet I was able to manage to get so many people through that door. I took that place from being you know, on the verge to making lots of money. And after I did what I did for players in that one day, sent 300 people through the door. I'd normally go up each week, I'd get about 150, whatever. Um, but this one day, I was in a good mood. And I was, mate, I was promoting the hell more out of players than I was out of, out of the other thing because it was more the nightclub-y people and everything like that. Everybody said, no, nah, they don't want to go. But then everybody, I guarantee you, everybody asked me what the best club was. So I told them everybody was mine. As I said, 300 people, 30 females looking for me. Well, I don't, even now, I'm still pretty good looking. But trust me, back then, I'm a lot better looking. Hey, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and my mate in the chat will tell you that uh, we worked together for oh, I forget how long Greg worked there but we did work there for quite some time and um, but the thing is it's sort of this is what I do and if anybody jumps into the chat of this video ask Greg how good I was at what I did I was the best I turned our sleaziest club and then back when I started there it was a sleazy piece of it. I turned it from that into the number one nightclub on the Gold Coast. I had record-breaking nights. I got commissions. The whole the, it sort of I did well for our club, and I was happy to do what I did. And I made money for somebody else and everything. <laughs> and it was the place to be. You're right there, Greg. You're right there, mate. But as I said, if anybody out there. Knows it. And even back then, I used to uh, get up and organise stuff um, out there. It sort of There was something going on with the local council up there. I ended up organising. That was a protest I organised. But we're not after protesters. We're only after everyday people. If you're 50, 60, God, I'm 61. I'm a heart attack, stroke patient. And I'm volunteering. I'm also turned around and done... Um, <laughs> If you're reading the chat, actually, I might put the chat up. Oh, no, I can't, don't know how to get that chat up in the thing. But um, the the point is, it's sort of, I know what I'm doing. And I know, and by doing this and getting you guys out there to just do the job. As I said, even if it's just doing that and giving that to somebody. Because I had staff. That's all they did. They just stood there, did nothing, but did that. They still earned a good payback. And I had even the kids that were doing that, they were most probably earning the least, but least, but they were still earning about 75 bucks a day. Uh, I had other kids that, like I call them kids, like they were 18 years old, but I had other ones that were earning 200 bucks a day. Uh, I had one bloke in one week earned over a thousand bucks just from a dollar, dollar a leaf learned. But See, even if you don't do anything, it's that instant instance, that quick instance of receiving that. They see it and they're reading it. Well, okay, I'm not going to check that out. Because you've put something into their hand that they've got to read, they're looking at it. See, they're looking at the label ones too. But see, we're controversial. They're going to be looking at our stuff more than the others. Because they know the, the common crap they get from the Labor and Liberal Party. But it's how often do they get handed the cannabis leaf? Well, it's not a cannabis leaf. It's a, well, it's a cannabis leaf on the poster. But um, pretty much it's just a little leaflet. And um, that's all it really is. And it's just handing them out. And if you all can help, please come along. As I said, my phone number is in the volunteer chat. Please come along. And if you want, join the party. Because the more the party grows, the better. Because we need this drug and we need the drugs changed, the drug laws changed. We need people to come out of prison that shouldn't be there in the first place. 
and all their criminal records should be expunged unless they've done something serious along with it. Um, because I've got to admit, some drug dealers back in those days, yeah, were a bit violent. But those people that were in prison for smoking cannabis, carrying cannabis, just enough to smoke for themselves. And yeah, they've gone to jail as well, sometimes only small periods, but I've known other people that go for longer because they've had too much on them. But it was the same, they wouldn't have had any more than that. I guarantee you, you carried that in the old days, man, you'd spend a minimum a year in jail. And these people should be let out. It was actually approved in the year 2006, along with medical cannabis. It was approved for recreational use via the TGA, the Therapeutic Goods Administration, who must approve any drug prior to its release, even alcohols. Everything must be approved. It's like the FDA, ours is the TGA. And it must be approved by this body. And it was approved in 2006. But it didn't start picking up any steam until 2016. And then when Can uh, the um, Canberra, when I think that was 2000, actually, was it 2016? I think it might have been, it might have been close to 2016, I forget actually. Um, Cavils. <laughs> but um, the thing is, it's sort of, you have to actually get out there and do something about it, folks. The more of you that get out and do something, the better. The more of you that turn around and help, the better. The more chance we've got of getting this legalised, decriminalised, so that nobody goes to prison again over this cannabis. People should be allowed to grow it in their backyards. And they really should. Oh, trust me, you're gonna need security anyhow if you're growing in your backyard. Your kids will, not kids, bloody adults will come and nick it if you're growing it. And, um, but the thing is, it's sort of, you take those precautions. If it was legal, trust me, you'd make sure it was locked in a wire cage and growing in the wire cage if you had to. But the thing is, we should be allowed to grow it, even if we have to go to that extent of putting it in a wire cage so kids don't go near it. It's sort of, but the thing is, it should be legalised, it should be decriminalised, and everybody in prison should be let out. They really should. They really, truly should be let out of prison. It's about time that this stupid, bloody prohibition ended. Look at all the other countries. We're one of the few that have not yet legalised it properly for recreation. And as I said, the moment you become legal and you can ask any medical cannabis user, that paranoia vanishes the day you get your first script from the doctor. That very day, it disappears. And I mean it disappears. I've actually smoked in front of police officers. As I said, you've seen me today. Killing my pain. And I've got to admit, these vapes are much better than the bloody um, raw smoke. You don't cough your guts up as much. It's safer. So, safer to vape than it is to smoke. It's been proven already. But that delivers me enough to get me by until the pain comes back again. Because unfortunately, it's taking it this way doesn't have the same effect as taking oil. See, with oil, what it, the oil does, it gets into the bones and works with all the bones and everything like that. So that, um, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, Michael, you're in the chat. Not a problem. You're in the chat. Cool. Um, yeah, Michael, uh, from, yeah, our party's in the chat. So, yeah, Greg, it's sort of, um, for other reasons, tell him how good I was at my job. This is for work-related things. Uh, I was good, correct? Um, you've only got to read the chat to tell you I was too good. Um, but those of you out there and everything that do want to volunteer, please come along. We need your help. We really do truly need your help. And don't be afraid. Why, why, do, you, why do you have to be afraid? Because I guarantee you, everybody that knows you already knows you smoke. 
Do you know why? Because they can smell it on you. Trust me, even if you've covered yourself in perfume, you can still smell it because it's on your breath. So you might think you've hidden it from your parents and hidden it from your family and hidden it from everybody else. You haven't. They all know. That's why police arrest you straight up because they say, have you been smoking cannabis? How? They can smell it on you. And so, yeah, it's sort of, you have to turn around and ask yourself why we can't do this when Canberra can. Why? Why can't we do it? Well, we all know that reason why. But for us to get it means we've got to fight. And the only way we can fight, we can do it in two ways. We could protest, yeah. What has protested and got us over the years? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We've tried and we've tried and tried and it hasn't done any bloody good. They ignore us. But they can't ignore us if we're sitting in Parliament. They can't. They've actually got to listen to us and they've got to accept our vote in Parliament. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get people into Parliament that, one, will help make sure that this is decriminalised altogether so that people can grow their own supply at home. And some people, and trust me, two plants for a medical patient is not enough because you must keep a constant supply going because not every plant works, trust me. I grew up with a, with a family that smoked and grew and everything like that. So I know a fair bit about this um, plant. And um, the point is that we have to turn around and ask ourselves, do we want to sit back? Do we want to leave it up to everybody else? And I know I've been going, I don't even know how long I've been going for now, but I don't care. Why don't I care that I've been on here streaming for a couple of hours now? It's because I believe what I'm doing is right. And I know that I can help and I know that you can help. So what I'm going to do, everybody, is I am going to end this stream tonight. I am going to stream again tomorrow and I'm going to stream every night until the election I'm trying to get some people in here um, I'm pretty sure Michael's one of the people that was interested in popping on a stream and I'm trying to get them to come along and volu volunteer to come in the show and talk, talk with us and talk to everybody about the elections and what's going on, how we can change things um, because unless we all stand up everybody because I know that 70%, minimum 70% of the population have or have used cannabis at one stage of their life and believe that it should be legal. But these are the ones that keep on saying, ah, oh, why isn't it legal yet? It's not legal yet because you haven't stood up yet. You haven't stood up for what you believe in. And if you believe it should be legal, this is the time that you have to stand up. It really is. You can't just keep on doing it, folks. You can't. Saying someone else is going to do it, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll let the politicians do it. Even getting us in is not just going to solve it in one day. It's going to take time because we've got to go through all the throes of Parliament. But with the more of us in there and there are enough of the party members running if we can get everyone in to power we can make a difference and we really truly can make a difference but without your help it's not going to happen because if we don't have every booth there at the moment as i said there's only four early booths in newcastle every area has a thing the the address for this is in the chat and I'm going to put it in the chat again. It will be in the thing. So this is for volunteers for the Newcastle and Central Coast area. Um, all you've got to do is contact the Legalisation Cannabis Party and they will put you on to the people that um, can help you for your area. As I said, we need people from everywhere, from border to border to border, to the sea and to the coast. We need them everywhere. We need them in the bush. We need them in the hills. We need them down in the flats. We need you everywhere. But all I'm asking you is just give up a day and come and help us. Stand up and help get this drug decriminalised and made it so that we don't have to pay 
thousands of dollars to get our medication. Because as I said, I showed you before, and these are only some of them, because I, I keep them to store things in. Because I, I store all my silica in these things when you drag them through. But to get that, that's a fortune. That, that costs a sheer fortune. And we shouldn't have to be paying that sheer fortune. That's mean. It needs to be on the PBS, full stop. For medical patients, this needs to be on the PBS right now. And without people in Parliament, we're not going to get it. But without people coming and helping at the polling booths, that's not going to happen. So until everybody stands up and says, OK, let's make a difference, that's never going to happen. So please, stand up and say, let's make a difference and volunteer. As I said, okay, if you want to join and volunteer in the Newcastle area, uh, my phone number is currently in the uh, messenger for our group. All the other groups have people in charge for their areas. There's always one person in charge of a certain area. As I said, I volunteered, I took over because Karen had a massive workload and I, I put my hand up straight away. So look, I've been trying to do something for a while. And um, the point is that, yeah, if you stand up, we're going to make a difference. So anyhow, uh, Greg, Greg, thanks for coming along. And I do appreciate it, dude. And I'm sorry I haven't been in contact, mate, because I have been pretty crook. So, um, and I haven't been streaming as much as normal. But I'll give you a call after this is all over. And um, actually, I might give you a call. Uh, yeah, I'll give you a call in the next couple of days. Have you? Uh, but, um, the um, the point is that unless everybody stands up, it's not going to happen, folks. So um, okay, we've got a volunteer. Jake's going to uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Jake. Thanks for volunteering. Thank you. And um, the more, the merrier. The more people we can get, the better. And the people we need is you no one else no no if, if you believe cannabis should be legal this is the election this is the election because if you leave, live in new south wales because see the federal government how they pass the buck they as far as they're concerned it's legal but it's not legal because the state bars it so that's their excuse we've said yes to it being legal but We've left it up to the state to make it legal. And that is directly from a certain politician's mouth. Uh, I have spoken to a few over the years directly. Most of the time I only speak to the underling. But over the years I've managed to get through to a few. And that's the thing. They don't care because they've got to pass the buck. Because they try and keep it so that they don't have to take responsibility. And then we've got the current government. And I do not have to say anything more about the current government. This is one government we need to get out. We need to kick this government out. Personally, we really do. And everybody in this state knows that. And this is the time that we are going to get rid of them. Don't vote for the opposition party. Vote for, if you're not gonna vote for our party, for Christ's sake, vote for a damned independent. The big parties have got to learn their day is over. And it really is. Because at the moment, the two-party system is currently run by one man. And he runs it all over the world. He keeps all the governments in a two-party system if he can. Now, trust me, everybody knows his name. I don't have to say his name. And the thing is, it's sort of, he's been doing it for years and they control it. The Bohemian Grove is the best example of uh, control is not really run by the, a lot of the governments because a lot of the governments have, have been corrupted over the years and it's time we got rid of them. And it really is time we got rid of them. But it's only going to be you standing up at that booth and having your go at helping. That's all we need. We just need the volunteers to help. Stand there. As I said, you don't have to say anything. Just hand out a leaflet. Give them a leaflet. But make sure it's in their hand because that leaflet will make a decision changing thing it is that leaflet that they have in their hand they're reading and they're going through that leaflet saying oh, okay i agree i think it's time i change my vote 
And trust me, a lot of votes are changed the exact same way that I used to change minds on their way to a nightclub. And trust me, I took a lot of business off other people. A lot of business off other people. I was actually so well known up on the Gold Coast that I used to have, st well, one staff member tried to egg me from another club because he lost his job because we took all, in one week, we took all their business. I think it was the Tricket, uh, Nightmare on Tricket Street party, Greg. Remember that party? I threw this party called Nightmare on Tricket Street. It was in uh, conjunction with the local picture theatre for Nightmare on Elm, Elm Street. And um, the thing is, it sort of, um, yeah, they didn't like me. I was actually that good at my job. Because, see, I didn't just look at our club. But when I was looking at our club, I went into every club. I walked around, went in, had a look, said a g'day to all the managers, had a drink with the managers, and went on my job. Went, and went around to the next club, said hello to the next one, how are you going, everything. And while I was there, I was just spying on them, looking at their club, seeing how many people there were. And then I was get, organising my guys, saying, OK, they've got too many clubs down there, cover the the penthouse guide, make sure that you get their ticket after they get there, they give theirs. And that was the secret, was getting your ticket to the person, la preferably last, before they got to that area where they make that decision. Because generally it's the last thing that they get will change their mind. Um, you don't have to be forceful. And it's not hard, it's just, yeah, hi, here you go. That's it, simple, very, very simple. So look, folks, um, Michael, my phone number is in the chat. Could you actually give me a ring as well? Not yet. Wait until the stream's over. So anybody that's willing to volunteer at Newcastle, as I said, my number is in the New South Wales Volunteer Newcastle Central Coast um, Messenger chat. Um, jump on there, grab my phone number, give me a telephone call, and let me know if you can volunteer. As I said, I am currently looking after these booths. I'll just get them up. Okay, I'm currently looking after the Adams. I need volunteers for the Adams Town Community Hall, which is 153 Brunker Road, Adams Town. Um, I also need people for the Mayfield uh, Pres sorry, Presbyterian. I should know that I used to be a Presbyterian uh, Church Hall in Macquarie Street, Mayfield, and the times are from 8:30 to 5:30. Well, really, to, um, oh no, well, some of them are open, oh, they're even open today. Um, but the thing is, it's the big one, is, oh no, they're open from that day, sorry, from that day. Um, so that we need to get these booze attended to. If you can't do one day, please do another. There's plenty of other days. As I said, I'm also looking after the Merryweather Scout Hall. Uh, which is Smith Street, opposite number five, Sports Ground, uh, Newcastle West. And also the Newcastle Early Voting Centre, 150 King Street, Newcastle. So if anybody can volunteer for those areas, please get into the, the group chat, get my phone number, and um, the group chat address is in there, in the chat of this video. That will be available. It will also be in the description. Get on there, you can get my number in there and give me a ring, let me know when and where you um, um, can do so that I can start organising it now because I have to start organising this now. And uh, thank you very much everybody for watching. Uh, thanks for coming along Greg. Thank you for coming along Michael, it's very much appreciated. And Michael if you could give me a ring after the stream stops it would be greatly appreciated. And I'll give you a ring later Greg, um, maybe tomorrow or something so we can have a yarn. Uh, still got to get together and have that beer, mate. We really do. It's been years since we've got together and had a yarn. Um, so, everybody, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it, and I'll be back here tomorrow. I may even have some guests. So, thank you for coming along, and we shall catch you all later. Thanks very much, and please, don't forget to like and subscribe. And, by the way, this video will also be posted over onto the Cannabis protester website on uh, youtube channel it's also being posted on all my other channels as well and um, if you do watch this all the details you will need to get to our um, volunteering page i will put links as many links in there as i can i'm trying to find out all the different areas and um, 
all the different volunteer groups for those areas so that we can get the volunteers for them as well. So I don't care where, where you are. Even, as I said, my mate's in Queensland. He's going to volunteer next weekend. If you are anywhere, even if you are just out of state, if, if you want to come in and volunteer, if you believe cannabis finally needs to be legalised, let's get state by state done. Victoria is on the way to getting it done. We are next. And it's our turn now. So please stand up and say something. Thanks, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to click the little bell down the bottom because if you don't click that little bell, you're not going to be notified when I do a stream. You're not going to be notified when a video comes up. And yes, I have numerous channels. I'm Bluebeard 2011. I do conspiracy stuff and space stuff. I'm Bluebeard 27. It's pretty much similar. And uh, I do the cannabis protester. I've got other sites that are totally irrelevant. They're just unboxing and all those sort of things. But yes, these are my main channels. I stream on my main channel for one reason. I know there are regulars that are in New South Wales and I wanted to stream on this channel to make sure that they got to see the video. And as I said, I've been now even got a volunteer coming from Queensland. And thank you very much, Greg, for that. It's very much appreciated, mate. So, um, and yeah. So those of you out there, thank you very much for watching and I shall catch up to you all later. Thank you. And the phone line is now open. Goodbye.